Hey guys, Patrick R with TAP TV, and today I'm going to take a look at the Smith & Wesson 360. Now this is a J-frame in 357 Magnum, so that means it's got a five-shot cylinder, and it's a pretty darn small gun. So what does that mean? It means you get a full power round and a really, really tiny concealable package. So carrying this thing on the daily really isn't that big of a stretch. And you get something that has been proven to have one of the highest one-shot stop rates ever. Now, let's take a look at the features. We'll start at the barrel and you get, like I said, a 357 Magnum barrel. Now this is 1.875 inches long, so just under two inches on the barrel. Uh, you get a ramped red front sight that's held in place by a pin. So you can drive that pin out and replace it with like a fiber optic or an excess big dot or whatever have you. Um, moving back, you have a set of sights. Now the rear sights on this are going to be kind of a fixed trough and then a five shot unfluted cylinder. Now the whole gun's coated in a PVD finish, uh, so it looks pretty good, should handle wear pretty well. Now also you have a lock on this model, so this is not a no lock model, this is a lock model which means it has a little lock right here that'll incapacitate the gun, it won't function if that is turned. Um, now it is a spurred uh, model, so it does have a spurred hammer, and you'll see I just cocked it into single action. And then you also get a double action, which is reasonably heavy, like just about every J-frame out there. Now in single action, like you might expect, it's, I'd say about four and a half, five pounds, and pretty darn crisp. But let's face it, this isn't a target gun. This is a carry gun. Now you also get these cool FDE combat grips on here, which make the gun very pointable. And if you had to draw this thing and get it on target and pull that trigger, you could do so really, really quickly. Now, we'll take it out to the range and do some shooting with it. And uh, I'm gonna tell you what, it was a pretty good time uh, with 38 Special, but once I loaded the 357 up, it started out okay, but after shooting a lot of them, it started to hurt a little bit uh, more than I would have liked. But it's still reasonably comfortable for a really small J-frame uh, that's shooting 357 Magnum. Now, I've got to be honest, I was a bit apprehensive about loading up those 30, uh, 357 mags in this thing because I've heard stories of guys that have shot the um, 360PD, which is a, a hammerless scandium framed uh, 357 Magnum that's even lighter than this one. This one comes in at 14.6 ounces, whereas the 360PD comes in at like 11.2 ounces. Uh, but I've heard people shooting those 360 PDs and actually causing nerve damage in their hands uh, or having them go numb. And it took me about 60 rounds for my hands to start going numb. But you know, prior to that, it was surprisingly okay. Now, something I did notice at the range is that when you go to cock it in a single action, you feel like you're in the sear right there, but you really aren't. You've got a really smash it down into the grip because the hammer actually contacts the grip just a touch. Um, and it's not more than maybe a 16th of an inch. Now, if it were me, I probably would just use a razor knife and relieve that a little bit or maybe change the grips out. Uh, probably just cut it a little bit. Uh, but I feel like that probably needs to be addressed um, because I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, well, if I'm spending the street price of $630 to $650 on this revolver, it should be right out of the box. And I tend to agree with you. Um, it shouldn't need to be modified, but sometimes that is the case because not every gun is perfect. Uh, now this could have just been the set of grips on my gun. I've only seen one of these things. Um, now other guns could be different. So definitely look at that when you go to your dealer to buy one or uh, pick it up from your FFL from transfer. Um, also, the lock is something that I'm not too fond about. I know that it's not that big of a deal, but I'm not hugely fond of it. Now, the double action is definitely something that you need to practice with because if I take my time, I get a good clean pull. And now in single action, that is a lot easier to shoot accurately. And it was surprisingly accurate. Um, at some distance and not terrible distance because it is a pretty short barrel and it is a little snub revolver. 
So I wasn't shooting it at like 25 yards or further, but at like 15 yards, it was pretty accurate in single action. Um, and then, you know, pulling the trigger in single action. Um, I gotta say, it's a really good looking revolver. And if I were looking for a full power Magnum uh, carry gun, this probably would be close to the top of my list. Uh, but me, I like semi-autos a little bit more so than revolvers uh, for carry use because I'm used to, you know, clearing the malfunctions if it should happen, which generally it doesn't. And uh, I'm pretty set on my carry gun. Now, I know James Reeves was really excited to hear about this and um, he was chomping at the bit to review it and somehow it got assigned to me. But um, when he uh, talked to me about it, he said that he was probably going to go out and buy one anyway um, because he was really intrigued by the concept for concealed carry. And if you know, James is a licensed CCW instructor in, uh, you know, concealed carry is a lot of what he likes to focus on when it comes to shooting. Um, he does focus on other things, but he does do a lot of small pistol shooting, uh, you know, like concealable pistol shooting. And this really spoke to him. Uh, you know, something like this would work pretty well as a carry gun, I think. Anyhow, if you're looking for one of these things, head on over to our friends at ProxyBid. And if you're looking to feed one with 357 Magnum or 38 Special, check out Ventura Munitions and uh, they can hook you up. We'll see you guys later. Bye.